Hello everyone. In this video, we will be solving a medium level problem from HackerRank forming a magic square. The problem statement is, we will be given a magic square with a list of integers from 1 to 9 ordered in 3 by 3 matrix. We need to convert it into a magic square where the sum of all the lines, straight, horizontal, vertical and diagonal is the same. And we need to record the minimum number of changes that we have to do to convert a given input into a magical square. Let's use this as another example. So we are given a 3 by 3 matrix with some numbers. So the total of each, the total of each horizontal, vertical and diagonal is not equal. So we need to find out which all spots that we can change which will make it a magic matrix or a magic square. After looking at these matrix, we have to make a, a total of three changes or three replacements which will make this a magic square. And the cost for making those changes is the absolute difference between the current value and the new value and add it with all the numbers that we have replaced. If you look at index 0, 0, we originally had 5, but it was replaced with 8. So 5 minus 8, then plus the next number that we replaced is at index 1, 2. Originally we had 8 and it was replaced by 9. So 8 minus 9 plus the next number that we replaced is 4, which is at index 2, 1 and it was replaced by 7. So 4 minus 7. If you take the absolute difference between the two numbers and add it all together, you will get a total of 7. So this is the minimum cost we have to incur to make the given input a magic square. This arrangement is not the only arrangement in which we can organize the numbers 1 to 9, giving us the right total. There are different combinations, but with these highlighted changes, we can get the arrangement done with minimum cost. So in this problem, we need to identify what are the minimum set of changes that we have to do to convert the given matrix into a magic square. I hope you were able to understand this problem statement. Let's switch to whiteboard and talk about how we can solve this problem in an efficient way. When I looked at this problem, the first thing that I was wondering is, how can I determine what should be the total for horizontal, vertical and diagonal? Will it be different depending on the input that I've given or will it be constant? So let's talk about that first. If we add all of the numbers between 1 to 9, the total will be 45. And given that we want to build a matrix with horizontal, vertical and diagonal lines having the same total, if I divide 45 by 3, the result is 15. So each line, horizontal, vertical and diagonal should result in the total of 15. Now that I know what is the total that I'm expecting for each line, I can now try to arrange the numbers accordingly. Now if I try to find out what all possible combination that I can build with three numbers to get the total of 15, there are total of eight combinations or eight possible ways. I have listed down all of those eight combinations. Now, if you look at a matrix, the numbers that we put in each of the boxes are has to have a certain logic. The position where I've placed X is going to be used once vertically, once horizontally and one diagonally. So it means that this number needs to be available for three different pairs. Similarly, if I look at the Y position, this Y is being used horizontally once and once vertically. It means the value that I will be assigning to Y should be used in any of the two combinations. The value that we will be entering in the center is going to be used the maximum times because this Z or this position is part of this vertical line, 
the horizontal and both of the diagonals. So this position is going to be part of a total of four transactions. Now that we understand how each position is going to be used in multiple transactions or multiple calculation, we need to use these formulas, identify the possible combination of numbers and try to assign it. So in this table, I will be entering how many times a certain number is being repeated in this calculation. Starting with the most commonly used 5. This number 5 is repeated in total of 4 transactions. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'll add 4 against 5. Similarly, 1 is being used twice. I'll add 2 against 1. Similarly, I will fill out the values or times for all of the remaining numbers. As we had discussed earlier, each of the position in the matrix can only have a certain combination of numbers because that number will be used certain number of horizontal, vertical or diagonal calculation. So looking from the most used position, the center position, the only value that we have in this table with the combination 4 is 5. So this center will always have the value 5. So now let's go to the position below that. Now this position is going to be used for a horizontal and for vertical. So two times. So now we need to look how many numbers do we have that are being used in two calculations or two possible ways. So over here we can have 1, 3, 7, 9. Similarly, the position above 5, it is also going to be used in one horizontal and one vertical. So just like below, in this position we can have four numbers. 1, 3, 7 and 9. Similarly, this position and this position also is being used only in two ways or in two transactions. We can have 1, 3, 7, 9. Now looking at the remaining corner positions, let's start with the first position or the number at this position is going to be used in three transactions. One is the vertical, one is this horizontal and the other one is going to be the diagonal. So we need to look at a number that is used in three transactions. Go and looking at our table, we have a total of four numbers which are being used thrice. So I will add those four numbers over here, two, four, six and eight. Similarly, the remaining three corners are being used thrice. So all of the remaining corners can have values either two, four, six and eight. And now that we know what all possible values that I can have for each position, I can now design different combination of matrix which has the valid values giving me the total of 15 in horizontal, diagonal and vertical positions. Let's try to come up with few of the combination. Phi is always going to be in the center. So on the left hand side for this position, I can have 1, 3 and 7, 1, 3, 7, 9. So let's start with 1. So if I have 1 over here, I cannot have anything else other than 9. Only then I will get the total of 15. Similarly over here, I can only have 7. In this position, I will have 3 and here I will have 1. Now let's calculate for the vertical pair where the possible values is 1, 3, 7, 9. Because in the first four pairs, 1, 3, 7, 9 is already used and we cannot use the same combination again. We need to use the remaining four pairs for that or else we will be repeating the same numbers. Going by the same approach and just like before, by calculating the difference between 15 and the sum of the two numbers that we already entered. Now let's look at the diagonal. So in the corners, the possible combinations are 2, 4, 6 and 8. So by subtracting the total 2, 5 from 15, I will get 8, 6, 4, 2. Now that we completed this combination, I will now do it for this two corners, 2, 4, 6, 8, and the third value will be 2, 4, 6, 8. So now we have completed this pair as well. Uh, looking at the first matrix, 
we have already used 1 and 9 from the horizontal line of the only two numbers that are left for this vertical is 3 and 7. So the only possible combination is 3 and 7. But we cannot do that for two reasons. One is if I add 7 over here, the total of 8 and 7 will give me 15. So any number that I add in the third place will take my total beyond 15. The another reason is when I add 2 plus 3, the total will be 5 and then I need 10 to complete or get the total of 15, which we don't have. Hence, I cannot do this combination, but I can do the other way around. I can put 7 over here and 3 here. So 2 plus 7 will give me 9. I still can get the total by adding another value. Similarly, 3 plus 8 will give me the total of 11. So I have 4 available. And on the diagonal end, I will have 6. This is the magic matrix. Let's try to solve the second matrix as well. So for this vertical line, the numbers that are left is 1 and 9 because we have already used 3 and 7. So we cannot use that. So between 1 and 9, I cannot put 9 over here because the total will become 15 already. In the last row, I will have 1 and in the first row, I will have 9. Calculate the total of 4 and 19, giving me the result of 2 and 2, 5. Total is 7, so the remaining is 8. Similarly, we can fill out all of the possible values in the remaining matrix and save it in a collection. The next step is to compare this with the input that we are receiving in the problem statement. Let's take this as an example. Now, if I want to convert this into a magic matrix, all I need to do is compare this individual value. So each of the values in the eight combination that we have identified, calculate the difference, save it, and continue the iteration for each of the numbers. Once we are done with the iteration, get the total difference, compare it with the minimum. Whichever is minimum, save it. Once we are done with comparing the input with all of the possible combinations of magic matrix, whichever is going to give us the minimum value will be our result. I hope you were able to follow this explanation. Understanding the part on how to build this matrix was the tricky one. But comparing the input that is given to us with all of the possible combination is easy. Let me show you how we can implement this using C sharp. So here is my C sharp solution. I start by initializing a list with all of the possible combination that we can have for a magic matrix with numbers 1 to 9. Then I am initializing a variable minimum and setting it to int.max. And I will use this to compare the total that we calculate for each magic matrix. Then I start the for each loop on the collection. I iterate to all of the possible values, calculate the absolute difference between the two and add it to this temp variable. Once we are done with this iteration, I'm comparing the calculated temp with the minimum value and whichever is smaller, will be saved in this minimum variable. Once we are done with iterating through all of these collections, we will have the minimum value in this variable and we can return it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you were able to understand my explanation and this code. This source code is available on my GitHub repository. The link will be there in the description below. Feel free to check that out and I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay tuned and continue coding. Thank you.